Okay, welcome everybody to another Learn It Live webinar for the 29th of April, 2020. I can't believe we're already here. Tonight we're going to be discussing MT5 Advanced Forex Trading Strategies. So we are going to assume you have some basic technical understanding uh, coming into tonight's webinar. And if you find it uh, a little bit too confronting, go watch all of our other webinars as well that are on Pepperstone's YouTube channel because there's some great information there. Uh, my name's Thomas Atkinson from FX Evolution, as always joined by Tyra Nabella. How are you, Ty? Hello, everyone. Yeah, welcome to, to tonight's um rainy wet webinar uh winter is certainly hit in melbourne for those of you who live in melbourne you'd know about it but um yeah welcome everybody from around the globe the mt5 um yeah live markets is going to be good fun tonight but uh, i'm going to start out just straight up by actually answering a question that we get asked uh it is definitely being recorded so for anybody who is looking for a recording it'll be uh recorded tonight and it will be on the purpose stone youtube channel uh, tomorrow morning at some stage okay so if you do miss it tonight or if you miss parts of it you can go and um yeah catch up on it tomorrow at the youtube uh, page for pepperstone okay ty so just before we get started uh, i'd like to remind everybody that uh, there's obviously a telegram group from pepperstone and fx evolution which is us and we really recommend you join both rooms on telegram get involved in the communities get involved in the great information that pepperstone puts out daily multiple times a day i've noticed that we've been even more active during this current crisis uh, that's broken out and i'm telling you what it's definitely worth um, following both of those another one ty obviously pepperstone forex channel uh, on youtube watch get that so that you can uh, see all of these webinars recorded and on our channel i'm now uploading daily videos so daily videos at the moment Go and uh, definitely subscribe. We'll chuck the links in the chat room. Okay, yeah, so what are we going to cover tonight, today? Oh, yep. I'm sorry, I was just going to say, because tonight is probably a little bit more advanced and we're going to be probably moving through topics a little bit quicker, the Pepperstone uh, page will be a very good resource for you because we've done a lot of videos on some of the uh, basic strategies that we use and a lot of things on indicators and price action. So if you do find tonight a little bit fast paced or there are things that you can't understand um, straight up, just go to the uh, Pepperstone YouTube page and just go through the history of some of the videos and webinars that we've done because there's a wealth of information there to bring you up to speed. Okay, so what we're going to be covering today, we're going to be looking at some live Forex chart analysis using MetaTrader 5. We're going to be looking at price action and pattern trading strategies, advanced MT5 smart, smart trading tools. Now these things, are, this is a great tool and if you don't have it, we'll talk about how you can get it but we'll, we'll go through some of that. And of course, live Q&A. So ask questions all the way through this webinar if you have them. We'll answer some straight away and we'll answer some at the end if we can. But firstly, risk warning, the information contained in tonight's webinar or video is generic in nature and for educational purposes only. The information does not take into account your personal objectives, financial situation or needs and should be considered only general in nature. And of course, seek independent financial advice if necessary before making any financial decisions. So economic impacts that are currently moving the markets, Tyrone. Look, coronavirus outbreak, obviously, and it's spread globally. Will there be a second outbreak? <clears throat> That's a big question at this time. Government stimulus as well, big thing that we need to be wary of in the current markets. Um, we need to know what's happening with each government particularly the Fed and what decisions they're making. So if anyone's trading currencies tonight or trading indices or anything like that, you need to be aware that tonight there's a FOMC statement and you need a calendar. So you need an economic calendar, know when these results are coming out. We're starting to see Ford GDP, I think is coming out tonight. We've also got, um, as I said, that statement, several meetings with the ECB, all sorts of things are happening over the next coming days. And if you don't know that and you're scalping or even day trading, you could get very nasty surprise. So be warned, you must be on top of your economic news. Make sure you're doing that. Of course, reserve banks, emergency interest rate cuts. A lot of those are already done. It's hard to cut past zero, but you know some economies have done it. But you do wanna be aware of those kind of uh, economic events. And of course, the figures are starting to come out. So be warned with those figures. Uh, I was talking to Chris before from Pepperstone, um, he's head of global research. And basically this is a chart he put in the Telegram group this week, Ty, and it shows you the similarities between the S&P 500 
and the Australian dollar. So you can see they're tracking incredibly similarly in terms of their breakouts and, and the movements that they're making. So potentially one could show you a move before the other actually happens because the, the tracking is uncanny in this chart, very, very close specifically in this rebound. And that's partly to do with physical policies between both countries and trade and all these other things that are going into it, but very important there. So as we like to do, we're going to jump in some, some charts and we're gonna talk about advanced strategy from the idea of we want to paint a picture of what's happening in the market before we even get involved in potentially any particular currency. And this goes for scalpers and it also goes for day traders or swing traders or anything like that. So here we've got the US dollar index and what I like to do as a price action based trader is I always like to go into a time frame. Let's say I was trading even a smaller time frame, like a one hour or 15 minute. I'd go on a daily and I'd just quickly draw up some key support resistance kind of areas that we've seen recently. And I just like to have them on my chart so that when I dial in on the smaller time frames, I can see what's moving, where it is, what's happening and what potentially could happen. Now, I think it's pretty clear to you and to me, Ty, that if this 101 was breached and let's say the market was to, to move up and then go past this level, that would be incredibly significant in terms of the market sentiment, wouldn't it? And if that was to happen, we would potentially be very interested in getting involved in buying US dollar. Where it is right now, we would want to be diving into the smaller time frames and saying, well, is there any opportunity for us? So what are your thoughts on on that 101 tie? Yeah, it's um it's a really key, it's a very key zone. But look, what what I'm liking about this one is how the the technicals have been playing out. Like they've been playing out really, really nicely um for quite a while now. And a lot of people don't actually realize that they can actually trade the, the dollar index. So yeah, for those of you who haven't explored it or, or if you haven't got it on your charts, probably it's a really, really important um uh, thing to have on your chart this this is yeah it's it's almost like a leading indicator for you know the the euro um you know a lot of the us dollar based pairs even though it's not technically us um it's even though it's not technically a leading indicator we like to use it as one because quite often it does preempt the move of the corresponding currency pairs so and you can actually trade it if you want to so you know although a lot of people don't trade it it's still uh, a vital resource to have you know in your chart window so you can actually refer back to it when you are trading things like the euro and um, a lot of the major dollar based pairs but as you can see it is actually quite technical uh, and it has been for for quite a while so the setups happen in much the same way as they do in the currency pairs that we that we look at we look for the same signals and uh, basically the same zones and levels to um, buy or short this one Okay, uh, well, here's the one hour tie on the US dollar index. And this is something that I spotted a little bit earlier in the week. And I guess, yes, okay, it's past revisionist history, but it's just important because you'll see it time and time again. Whenever you notice like a relatively decent trend line, and this is definitely a relatively decent trend line, see how price interacts with that zone. It's an important thing that you want to do as a trader. Notice here, we've got that little shooting star candle, Tyrone, that comes straight off after it breaks through closes, shooting star, and then of course continues its move down. Now usually what you would hope to expect is it comes back, tests it, finds resist, finds resistance at previous support, and then of course sells off. And if you see a shooting star here, this would be a good indicator for further downward momentum. And what we would do is a technical trader would say, okay, well it's broken, broken the trend line, it's come back up, it's found the dynamic uh, resistance and then of course we've got that rejection maybe we've got a moving average this is the 50 moving average here and all of those reasons together are what you'd be looking for as a trader and then that gives you a bias on other US dollar pairs so the beauty of being able to read and potentially find a bias on the US dollar index is that you can then move that into the euro as Ty said or the pound US dollar or the US dollar yen or any of these types of, of currencies Another one we want to look at, Ty, is the VIX, so the volatility index. And right now the VIX is on a kind of a support line. We could see happen over here, support, that support, then saw a pickup in the VIX, and now we're back on the support line. A break below here, potentially we're seeing even further 
um, I guess, you know, de-risking and or risk on kind of approach and people are less volatile, less kind of scared of what's happening with the market. Maybe they believe the Fed's got it controlled. But this will be an important point and there's no coincidence that it is here just before the FOMC statement. So that's what usually happens. A currency or particular things will gravitate towards key resistance and support lines before news. Generally speaking, the biggest bit of monthly news is usually non-farm payrolls and that bit of news, often the euro US dollar, the pound US dollar will move towards the next key support or resistance zone before that bit of news and then it will either break it or it will reject off it based on obviously how that news event occurs. A couple of things that you always want to be thinking about, it's like chess really with trading. So if this was support and let's say it broke through and then it got above this point here, that would be significant because that was previous support which became resistance, which if it broke through could become a a zone where you could see role reversal and a further increase in volatility in the market. Now, I'm not saying we get back here to these 80s and 75s tie, but one thing that could happen is we might be able to take the distance here and say, okay, well, the volatility basically will go back to these previous highs. That might help us in trades. Usually as volatility increases, bearish sentiment on things like the S&P 500 or other indices tie does occur. So what are your thoughts on this? I mean, the key levels ahead of a statement usually happens, doesn't it? It does, and it seems to gravitate uh, towards it every single time. And it's just, it's uncanny how it, how it happens, but I'm sure um, a lot of you are probably starting to realise that this is how, you know, even before a non-farm payrolls event, quite often the, um, the majors will gravitate to a support or resistance zone. But it probably brings up a good point in terms of at these key levels, what you want to be looking out for, because obviously price action is very, very important. And I might actually, we'll just go back to the to the dollar index there actually for a second, because I want to highlight, um, we had that shooting star candle that we were talking about at the break of that trend line there. So when that trend line first broke, that's a, a, a shooting star candle. Now, yeah, we say it time and time again, a, a good candle set up in the middle of nowhere isn't very powerful. But when you put a good candle set up or a good pattern set up at a, a key level of support or resistance or a trend break or you know, something that's actually significant, it adds about you know 10 to 20 times the potency of that candle. So because that shooting star is at a very, very key level, um, if you were there at that time, that is just a, a perfect signal to be going short because it means so much more than a shooting star that's in the middle of nowhere. Now, now yes, this sold off quite sharply, so it didn't come back and retest it like we would have hoped. But the clue that we had that that may not happen is exactly that the moving averages crossed right there. So the moving averages were, were already pretty much crossed as soon as it broke through. Now, once that happens, it is very rare that the, the price actually comes back and tests it because the moving average momentum is already um, pushing down. So when, when we what we mean by that is the 20 moving average, which is the red one that you can see here, is already accelerating away from the slower moving average, which is highlighting to us that the speed is in the market. Okay, so the speed in the downtrend is already in place, which makes it quite a bit more difficult for the price to actually come back and retest that trend line. But don't worry, it doesn't mean that you just jump in and, and hope for the best. What you want to be doing is looking for your next entry signal. If you miss um, something on a one hour, don't just panic and jump in because you think you've missed the boat. There's always plenty of opportunities. If it comes back to the zone that you want, great. But other than that, you're looking for those other opportunities. So testing the 20, testing the 50, um, and making another series of higher highs and higher lows. So once we've got confirmation bias, Ty, and we always stick with the US dollar and VIX and those kind of things to get a bit of an idea of what might be happening with dollar strength or dollar weakness, because that is the major at the end of the day, we then jump into other currencies. And one of the ones that I want to highlight tonight, just because it happened, and it happened this week, and, and I was waiting for this for so long. I mean, we talked about it in the, the webinar that we, we do for ourselves every week as well. This particular currency has been sitting at the 107 as key level of support. This is the US dollar yen, which is on the four hour here. And if we jump into the one hour, look at how the break occurred and look at how it came back and tested from a price action standpoint. I love seeing this. We saw a coiling event where basically the market was stuck in a channel, very key channel. It broke out of the channel and then it came down, tested the previous support. We'll just draw all this up for everybody. So we've got that, that previous support <clears throat> over here, tested that, 
very coiled market. And then as it broke out, big candle pushed through, came back, and this is why it pays to have patience. In uh, one of the videos I did, I put a little Yoda um, sign in there and it says like patience, young pad one, is, and it says above trend followers. And that's because generally speaking, the market will come back and give you a conservative entry off a break. So for any price action based trader out there thinking, oh, we're in high volatile times, I've always got to take the aggressive entry. One approach that you could take to it is potentially on the close, you might say, okay, I've seen this key level, this 107 break then I might place half of the position that I would usually place and then I would place half of the position at the conservative. And that allows you to be in or have skin in the game, feel good about yourself, but at the same time, we also have the opportunity of taking advantage of the conservative entry. So that role reversal worked perfectly, Ty. What a yeah. zone, came up, bang. It was just an amazing here. zone, it really, it really was. And I know um, so many people got this trade, which is awesome because it means that people are waiting for the right things. It really uh, pleases me no end when everybody is anticipating and waiting for the right thing to happen. Now, I know that obviously this has happened now and we can say, oh yeah, the end is awesome, but this happens time and time and time again. I, I can't begin to tell you. The reason why technical analysis even exists is because it is effectively history repeating itself. And one of the most, um, I guess, effective ways to really harness that power is to look for the breaks, especially when a market is coiling and wait for the retest. Now, there are gonna be instances that it doesn't retest it and it keeps going because it's too sharp. But if you only, and I, and I mean only traded breaks and did the retest and entered on the retest every time, you'll be a profitable trader if you've got the right risk management without any other um, aids because it happens so often. So you really want to be setting your alerts um, for that. Like Thomas said, it is almost like a game of chess where you're preempting what the market is going to do, your opponent is <laughs> going to do, which is effectively the market. And um, you, you know, we, we know where the market is potentially going to go and where we know it's going to sell off, you know, eventually fairly sharply most of the time, especially if it is in a serious uh, break like like that yen was. That was just absolute poetry. I, I have to bring it up, Ty, because I was, I was up at a ridiculous hour last night about 1 a.m. And I took this snapshot and I chucked it in the private telegram and uh, for members of the course. And I just, I had to put it in there because I just saw it. I saw key um, price action in terms of, what you're noticing uh, you've got key kind of highlight zone of the break of the the support and then of course that's the key reversal kind of standpoint from a technical perspective so look it, it it's something that you can see and it's about being patient look for the big money movement levels and that brings me on to the cad now i don't think this is anywhere near the um the opportunity that the yen was in terms of a, a very nice break off a key level but here is a price action based um, you know, system where basically you're looking at a head and shoulders and you've got your left shoulder, your head and your right shoulder and then you've got a key level of support that was broken, come back and it's retested it. Now the CAD's a little bit tough to trade and that's because if you understand how the CAD trades generally and one second, I'll grab this up. So if you understand how the CAD trades generally, it's kind of pinned partially to oil, or it has been. So if oil prices, which they are at the moment, is suffering, often the CAD will weaken and therefore the US dollar would be stronger versus the CAD. And that, that's what kind of, to a degree, makes you not like this as much, but you do have that left shoulder, you've got the head, you've got the right shoulder. But whenever you're looking at a head and shoulders pattern, you need to think, well, the idea of a head and shoulders pattern tie is that you've got, a point where the market has reached a high after following a trend. Is this really a trend? It's a couple of big bullish candles, but it's not really a trend. So while you, you are spotting something and you're correctly spotting it, it's about following the pattern at the end of a trend. Or if you're following a trend, let's say like this, and then it's going in the direction of the trend, like, like let's say like that, and then it breaks through, that is actually really good as well. That's a very strong kind of concept. So normal head and shoulders convention is basically the end of the trend, but you want to actually see some form of trend with higher highs and higher lows like Tyra mentioned before. And that is the key to something like the US dollar cat. Okay, so let's talk about smarter trading tools, Ty, before we get back into the charts. And smarter trading tools, it look, it's great for trade management and entry. 
Um, it's got things like session maps, which we'll talk about in a second. It's got sentiment trader, which is kind of cool. Mini terminal, probably my favorite of the smarter trading tools. And then of course, if you want to get action, um, access to this, you want to talk to your Pepperstone representative to get access. And I believe Tyrone, you can correct me if I potentially am wrong. I do think you technically need a funded account of some kind of money to be able to access this. Is that yeah, correct? So it's it's free. All the tools are free for anybody who's got um, a live account. I think it can be it can be as little as five hundred dollars. It just has to be a live account, and the Smart Tools app is free. So basically, just contact your your advisor, and they'll be able to hook you up with the link. Um, it's it's one of the most valuable tools that have ever been released for forex traders, in my opinion. Uh, that's a big call, <laughs> but um, the mini trade terminal in particular, uh, yeah. something so simple can be something so powerful because it takes care of the one thing that brings probably 80% of traders undone, and that is risk management. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is and how um, how you really must download it and and use it to as as much as you can because it works really really well. And in a in an age where we've got so many different different um, opportunities to trade. It's not just the Euro USD anymore. You've got right. yeah, basically oil, gold, silver, yeah, any metal you want uh, is available. Um, so that really helps you break down the risk because it can be very difficult uh, to break down the contract sizes to get the right risk management without it. So it does all the work for you. Okay, well here we've got the trading terminal tie and it's not actually one that I, I, I love the mini terminal, we'll go into that in a second, but this is kind of cool. So it lets you bring up everything and you can actually click on your little energy and it will modify your symbols over here, but really it'll show you everything that Pepperstone has to offer and then you can open up your charts and do all of the actions, manage your actions, do closeouts, all sorts of things in this terminal. So have a look at that one. The other one is the sentiment trader which is quite cool we'll load that up and the sentiment trader shows us what the collective kind of people are doing so if somebody is doing something uh, and trading it'll show you whether they're collectively long or short or what what people have decided to do i actually find and when you're a price action based trader and you're looking at key support resistance that kind of thing if we load up that yen what we'll probably end up finding is that a little bit more is long than short, even though the technicals are showing us a short on the larger timeframes in terms of uh, what the price action has been doing at least recently. And that can be because there's a lot of retail traders scalping in smaller timeframes. But it's great to see uh, whether people are against you or not against, or for you or against you. But we do need to remember that when you're trading, you really want to be where the big guys are. So you do want to be not so much with the general everybody, but you want to be where the big guys are placing their positions and scaling in and out. So that's that's important fact uh, when it comes to sentiment. All right, Ty, session map, another one I, I kind of had ready for tonight in terms of something I want to show everybody. If you don't already have some reason or some way of telling yourself when sessions open, it's great to have this little session map, it shows you the Sydney, Tokyo open, London open timings where we are. So right now it's 8.23 p.m. And then of course when New York opens and just having a session map, doesn't have to be this one, but any kind of session map is very, very important because if you don't know when key markets are opening, again, if uh, you are, let's say trading, one trade London open and you're trading the pound and it moves quite heavily in open often, if you're not aware of that time and it, it can be detrimental so knowledge is power in this way the other thing i love about this ty is these little red and yellow kind of symbols it's like a little economic calendar so look at that fomc statement 4 a.m for us i am not going to be awake for that <laughs> and then 4 30 a.m for the press conference so i'll read it after the event uh I'm, I'm prepped for that kind of thing but the point is is it's there at your fingertips so all of it's there and that's excellent the last one, Ty, before we get back into the charts, the mini terminal, your favorite. So what you want to do is when the mini terminal loads up, and let's hope it does load up, there we go, we've got the little orange button. And you want to click this one here, and then it will load this little new window. And in here, you could select all the different types of orders that you want to place, buy, sell, buy limits, buy stop, sell stops, all those types of things. You can select percentage or fixed cash risk, or even percentage of balance, which is kind of nice. So if you had like a, a $10,000 account, you always want to risk a percentage 
of that balance, you could do so. Um, so that, that's quite nice there. You can also put fixed lots in, stop losses based on pips. If you prefer to do it in pips, maybe you have a 50 pip or 65 pip stop loss or whatever it might be. You can do it in all sorts of different ways. And then you can place order, put comments, trailing stop, everything's there. So it seems simple, doesn't it, Ty? But everything is in this little window that you probably basically need as a Forex or any kind of instrument trader. Yeah, and you can set up little templates um, that you can bring up really mm -hmm. quickly, so you can have yeah, a quick sure. drop of you can have a quick drop of the menus. Um, yeah, like a lot of the time, yeah, you, your risks should be fairly straightforward and, and fairly flat actually. So you, you can certainly do templates, but it's so fast and um, and quick to fill in for everyone. You you'll find that you probably don't you know use them as often as you probably think. So you just sort of play around with it and um, get a feel for it. But it is a very very quick way to trade. It probably you know, re realistically, if you know where your stop loss and take profit zones are in in pips or even in price, you can probably get a trade on that in about 10 to 15 seconds, I'd, I'd estimate. So there's no yeah. delay. Even if you're scalping, you can use it. There's just no reason why you shouldn't be. It's just It just keeps it so much safer. I mean, the thing is, if you... We've all been there, Ty. We've traded some crazy news events over the years, and I, I, I will never forget... Um, quantitative easing events during the uh during the gfc oh, that was crazy and and you just see currencies move like two cents in a second so do do be careful um around highly volatile times and make sure you use things like the mini trade terminal it will help you out all right well uh odd us dollar tie now this is a currency that as we mentioned before is moving kind of hand in hand to a degree with the s p 500 we've got a new break high here in terms of what it's done recently if we're going over from a top-down approach and a bit of a higher time frame i think it's pretty clear that most people will see this form of support became resistance and if the australian dollar is to continue strengthening it would make sense that it could potentially strengthen to this kind of 66 from the larger time frame perspective if that then hit and we saw something like a double top or some kind of reversal pattern or something like higher highs and then a higher low and then a lower low and all those kind of things that would signal potentially a change in the shift of the market so again we're just, it's like, as I said, playing chess. You want to be thinking about, well, what kind of scenarios could occur? And if I see these scenarios, am I ready for them as a trader? And this could be any time frame. This could be a, it doesn't have to be a weekly. It could be a one hour, it could be a 15 minute. All we're doing is we're figuring out key zones and key support resistances with our price action. And we're thinking ahead and devising ideas and plans because most of trading, when you've done it for long enough time, is really just waiting, being patient, and taking the correct orders when they come up. You want to be in advance of the market with your ideas rather than being reactive. And I think the market will will do something and then you might have three different scenarios that possibly could happen. It does one of those scenarios and you go, great, I plan for that. And that's pretty much what I think it really is, isn't it, Ty? You, you need to plan for, for what could be on the horizon. Yeah, no, 100%. It's, it is true. I've got a quick question here, um, and I know it, it's something that um, does uh, get a few people annoyed. It's about um, the alerts on MT4 and MT5 and how you can um, shut them down. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a setting in, I think you can do it from your Windows base as well. You can actually go into, into settings on your Windows and you can pick and choose which apps you want to silence. So you can actually do that from the sound card itself on Windows if, if Windows is what you're using. But there's also, um, there is a setting in MT4 and 5 as well, just in the, I think it's in the tools and, and options where you can actually silence uh, any of the, the bells and alerts. I know if your internet drops out, it, it comes up with a, a ding, which is quite annoying if you live in Ocean Grove and <laughs> um, the internet drops out constantly. But yeah, if you wanna shut them down, rather than just turning your speakers off, of course, yeah, you can go into the settings on Windows and in the MT4 and 5 platforms themselves. Okay, so this is one that's more to do with indices at the moment, but I think, it's, you know, it's definitely one that just shows you kind of the stages of just emotion when even trading. And this is, of course, the market, 14 stages of trading psychology and why it's okay not to always be good. I just wanted to bring it up because I think people are too harsh on themselves sometimes with trading. And it's, it's a harsh game in terms of when you're doing it. The market sometimes is, 
you know, not very nice to you and it can it can treat you a bit poorly even when you've got a great trading idea. So you've just got to realize that if you're ever putting yourself in the euphoric stage, you really want to bring yourself back down to just kind of like a middle range. You want, you don't really want to be in any of these types of things. You want to just be in the middle range. So these are all the different emotions we have, but you don't really want to be feeling relief because you've made a terrible decision and then it's come <laughs> back. <laughs> That's for sure. I would always argue I don't want any of these. I mean, especially yeah. not thrill either. I don't think I want that one. <laughs> I, I did say that most traders when they first start out would probably suffer all those emotions every hour. Um, can, maybe maybe, you're, maybe you're on a one minute tick chart, Ty. They're, they're yeah, if you're happen, on a one minute yeah. tick chart, you're probably going to get through a lot of those as well. Um, look, we're getting a couple of requests for individual out. pairs as well. So I just, uh, for individual um, pair market analysis, we've got um, our webinar starting in about half an hour. So anybody who would like to um, ask questions about individual pairs and market analysis on those, feel free to jump in on our webinar. I'll pop the um, link in the in the chat window. That's a free webinar, so you can just click on that and you can join us in half an hour. So we can't uh, go into too many uh, pairs tonight because this is more about teaching some of the systems in the live market. But yeah, I'll pop that link in now so you can uh, jump in and watch ours in half an hour if you like. With any price action based trader tie, you want to have a few indicators potentially that you have in your arsenal. It's no secret that we don't mind some indicators. We like, uh, let's say, MACD, and of course, we do like certain moving averages. The 20 and the 50 moving average, and that's the red and the blue one that we had on the charts before, they're ones that really work well as dynamic support or resistance and also act as a really good kind of idea of when the market is changing trends as well. So make sure you, you consider the 20 and the 50. And one of the reasons you want to consider the 20 so much, other than it being industry standard, is because when you think about a trading month, there's generally around 20 trading days. And remember, 20 moving average is based on those, those uh, previous uh, daily candles. Let's say if you're on a daily or any time frame, 20 different time frames. So that effectively means that it's it's kind of encapsulated in that month. And as humans, it's like the calendar month, the calendar quarter, the calendar, you know, six months, and, and of course the calendar itself. So do remember the 20 has so many reasons for it to be good. Another one type, we want to enter using, of course, a points-based system and preferably we will see some form of trend change. Remember, most patterns are trend changes. I'll bring up the pattern cheat sheet and you can chuck this in um, the room if anyone doesn't have this already. Uh, it's free, we definitely we provide it for free. You can just sign up and get it directly in your email inbox. But during a period of high volatility like we're seeing right now, things like the double top patterns, things like the head and shoulders, the symmetrical triangles, the ascending triangles as well, flags and pennants, they all work really, really well. And I would say that if I was going to pick some of these and, and as a beginner trader or even a more intermediate trader, I think the easiest ones would be the double tops, the head and shoulders, the symmetrical triangle, and then the ascending, descending triangles. I think that the flags and pennants, while they're the biggest and highest risk rewards to risk, the biggest problem with these particular types of patterns is that they're sometimes a little bit difficult to spot and you can make mistakes until you're a seasoned kind of um, veteran, I guess, in terms of the amount of hours you're putting into the charts. So good place to start. These reversal patterns, which are going to be excellent as well in periods of high volatility like we're seeing right now, and these patterns we see off breaks. So if I'm going to, I'll draw an example of what we might see in a chart and I'll talk to you about why it's so good. So often you'll see like a market, and this let's say might be a daily, and then on the one hour, you'll see a series of higher highs and higher lows coming into it, and then that effectively is like a little trend line, you've got that little ascending triangle. And often markets will break using something like this ascending triangle here. They'll break through, and that will happen at the end, just on the resistance. So as a technical price action based trader, you'll actually be able to pretty much predict that that is a really solid break based on the fact that you're seeing that ascending triangle into the break. You'll often see that. You might even see something like this where the market will go up and then it will come down and it will do something like this. And you've got that, that little double bottom in the direction of trend. And then the double bottom is actually predicting a break of the new high. So the range, I didn't draw it that well, but the range will be actually bigger 
than than the take profit up here and that will be predicting that the market really wants to break a high so these little kind of key things that you can pick up from patterns and price action can help you to predict a little bit about what might happen in the future set your take profits as well put your stop losses in more importantly because you've got the pattern stop losses and they give you this confidence in your trading system and you can see it play out in front of you and when you have that confidence uh, then you can scale your business or scale your trading and it's really important to know that if you're trading like a 0.01 or a 0.1 contract now how would you react if you were trading 10 contracts or 20 contracts or 50 contracts tied a lot of people don't think about scaling out their trading if you're sitting there on a five minute chart could you really risk a million dollars on that five minute chart you know realistically if you're being honest with yourself when you're placing a trade it might be difficult to to bring yourself to do that so you do need to have this confidence and you need to have multiple reasons to be in and patterns are definitely one of them and i highlight this every time ty wait for confirmation breaks so important I'll pop that trading cheat sheet in as well. So anybody who, who would like it, the link is in the um, the chat room. So just click on that and uh, you'll get a download of it. So print it off and put it on your wall. Perfect. So double bottoms, we discussed that just before. This is just an example of a double bottom. Again, we assume you have an idea of uh, the basics of um, price action in terms of you know this, this type of thing. Uh, but when it comes to looking at them potentially in the market, let's have a look at gold someone mentioned gold before so here we've got gold and we will use the full top-down approach tie that we talk about all the time when we're doing a top-down approach we might even go to a monthly then we'll go to a weekly then we'll go to a daily then we'll go to a four hour then we'll go to one hour and so on and so forth and we do this because we want to have an idea of all the key support resistance zones and then we start breaking it down so here we are on the weekly not seeing too much obviously it's been incredible volatility um that's come through then on the daily we start to spot something and i think i'll put that line i'm going to put a resistance line just up here at these wicks uh, you could also just put it potentially at the bodies the bodies are usually a really great way and what i like to do is i like to have this as my zone so if i've got wicks and bodies i draw both and then i'll have that as the zone that i might think about hey is there a reversal hey is there a break in there that'll be where i set my alerts for um, in terms of the resistance side and we'll jump into a four hour and it's starting to become pretty clear to me, Ty, that we're, we're potentially seeing a setup that could happen if price was to continue going down. And I'm sure you are starting to spot it as well, or you probably already have, but effectively, if the market was to continue coming down here with gold and then it broke past the 1663, what would this pattern be? I'm gonna ask the room, let's see if anyone knows. I have drawn it kind of, but uh, don't don't tell anyone, Ty. But uh, what, what I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> I'll give everyone twenty seconds. Absolutely. Oh wow! So many people getting it. So yes, absolutely. Everybody is correct. It could be a double top. So we've got the resistance followed by an equal kind of resistance followed by the intervening trough. And then of course, if the market came down and broke past this zone, then that would mean that we've got a double top on gold and would signal potentially the reversal. Now, remember we said before, the importance of any good reversal pattern is there was actually a trend coming into it. And there definitely was. I and mean, we, we saw a massive bull momentum followed by further bull momentum. And another thing even happened here, Ty, and I haven't even tested this, but I'm sure it's fairly similar. The range happened again and it was slightly shorter, which is what we expect. So usually when a market moves in a big leg, it'll often move that leg again uh, with price action. It did happen here. And it goes about 80% of what you expect. And that, that's, that has been what happened. But nice big bull trend coming in. If this was to occur, that would be of course the bear trend. And then in terms of distance of what you would expect from a pattern like this, something like this distance technically, is it, if it proves in the market, it's even better. So previous support levels, very good. That means it's even stronger in terms of the market has really thought about this level. And that's the more advanced technique of price action based trading. You want to say, okay, not only do I see this pattern, but then when I see this pattern, where would the take profit technically be for the take for the pattern? Does it go into a previous support resistance? If it does, 
makes more sense means that big money has been trading and they're trading with a reason and that's so important so ty i mean what do you think about that i i personally think that was a massive light bulb moment for uh for us but uh what, what are your thoughts about proofing a pattern yeah, most definitely. When, when you do start to see them unfold and, and waiting for the proof to happen, it changes uh, the way you, you trade. It, it takes uh, it takes you away from being a reactive trader to, I guess, a preemptive one, if you like, where, yeah, you are actually waiting for setups. You're waiting for the right things to happen. It teaches you patience. Um, you don't want to be, look, it, it, there's nothing wrong with being reactive in, in terms of what price action is doing, but you don't want to be reactive um, without a plan. Because reaction without a plan is only going to lead to second guessing what you're doing, especially if things start to go wrong for you um, several times in a row. And that's when, you know, risk goes out the window and um, that's when the wheels really start to fall apart. So, you know, ha having that plan and having that patience to actually, you know, proof what you're seeing uh, by multiple um, forms. OK, so when we say proofing, we're talking about you know, waiting for the correct zones, waiting for price action, waiting for the the right amount of indicators that are actually telling you the right story. It's that sort of patience that builds uh, a trading plan. And, and that's really where you want to be because that's what will set you apart and give you the consistency that you need to take this to the next level. It certainly will. So just last uh, couple of ones here that I had as some examples before we get back into the slides and some Q&A type. Um, this one here, the Euro pound, it's just something that I saw sitting at support and I kind of went in and had a had a little bit of a look at it. Now it's not something that you might you might just notice the support, but again, just the support is not a good enough reason. But the reason I want to bring this up is there's a clear level of resistance that's coming across this 8850. And again, this could be a five minute, could be a 15 minute, doesn't matter, guys. It's the same principles of price action based trading. And then you know, what if it gets through here? Will that be key? What if it comes back and then we see a bullish hammer here or something like that? That's the type of scenario. Whenever I look at a chart, I'm always thinking, what, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? Uh, what could potentially happen? If it breaks down here, what is my scenarios that I'm looking at from a price action base? Where are the moving averages? Are there daily, you know, 200s and things? If I put on the, um, the template here, is there a daily 200? Is it above or below? Has it been in a massive trend? All these types of things from the top-down approach, I will consider. Pound odd, I want to bring this one up as well because this is where price action-based conservative trading gets a little bit difficult. And this one here is very key kind of support was broken on the pound odd. You can see here on the daily, we've got the 2050 cross and then just bang, just sells off uh, all the way probably you know, it would make sense for it to, to come down here from a price action based perspective, 200 daily moving average, one of the ones we pay a lot of attention to, and a big aggressive sell off. So the way that you want to look at something like this is you need to see, well, is, has it been following some form of role reversal on the way down? It certainly did here, but then has it been doing that every time? Well, it, it couldn't, it didn't do it here, it just didn't come back. So sometimes you can use moving averages and look for the moving average that's kind of following time and time again and use that. And that may help you get into trades or you potentially find the support line and you do something like what happened here where you, you've got multiple touches to the support line and you can do something like the one, two, three method where you can go, okay, how many times has it touched this zone? If it's touched it multiple times and then it breaks through because the trend is aggressive, it did that last time as well then maybe we take the fourth when it breaks and we take it for a certain amount of distance. And then we maybe follow it by a 50 moving average on the daily, I'm sorry, on the hour, because we know that it hasn't hit that 50 moving average for quite a while. And that keeps us in the trade. All these types of things you can start to bring into your trading. Maybe you follow it with a 20, but it, the key is to recognize something that has occurred and then for it occurs again. It happened here and then for it happened again here. And I think we saw that with that one, two, three, both times, multiple touches, very similar touches, and then bang straight through. So it's that reoccurring thing that you want to be able to spot before uh, it happens for the second time or the third time. And again, if it came up and it did one, two, three again and broke through, then that is a repeating event. Okay, so there's the one, two, three method. Uh, we just talk, touched on that. Thoughts on role reversal. Obviously, we talk about this all the time. It's in heaps of the webinars we run. Optimizing entry into based on confirmation. I'll just say that again. 
Karen and I talk about it all the time. Creating a system based on multiple entry criteria are incredibly important. Not one reason, multiple reasons. Trend. You want trend to be your friend. How are you seeing trend on the larger time frames? If you're on a 15 minute, make sure the one hour is at least trending in your direction. That is essential, I believe, when it comes to trading any market. Um, understand the instrument you're trading as well to a degree before you're trading it. Um, all right, Ty, another just shout out for the Telegram groups and the YouTube channels uh, for Pepperstone, of course, FX Evolution. Check them out. As I said, we're doing daily content at the moment as well, and we're doing weekly webinars um, at this stage anyway. So if you guys are enjoying this, we'll just continue to do them and um, continue to yep. pop as much content as yep. we can in. Given the, the turnouts that we've been having, you, you guys have been absolutely amazing. So, yeah, thank you for joining us every Wednesday. And I think, um, yeah, given the numbers that we're seeing and the popularity of them, yeah, we're hoping to continue them on, um, yeah, every Wednesday for the foreseeable future. And we are going to try and, um, yeah, definitely try and incorporate as much live market analysis as possible uh, in them as well. Because I know there's nothing better than learning uh, on the job, if you like, and actually seeing it unfold. Um, as we talk about it. So, yeah, thank you so much for all of your support. You've been fantastic. Absolutely. And um, we look forward to coming uh, at you again next Wednesday with a, a new topic. Uh, but And also what we also need to say is if you do have any particular things that you would like us to cover uh, on behalf of Pepstone, certainly let your um, account managers know or send support an email and let them know. So we'll try and cover the most popular topics. Or even if it's not just the whole webinar on that topic, we'll try and incorporate them into the webinars that we're doing. So again, you can learn um, while you see the live market uh, markets play out. So, yeah, once again, look, I've answered a, a heap of questions, nearly all the questions we've um, answered. I know, I was looking through them while you're answering them all. <laughs> yeah, so, um, <laughs> but anyone who wants to do a live market analysis with us now, just click on the um, on the link that I posted in the chat window. You can join us at our live market webinar that starts in 15 minutes. And if you have any pairs that you would like us to look at, certainly uh, pop them in and we will try and get to them. But we always cover the majors anyway. So... Thank you again for, for oh, joining us, hopefully. Wait, wait a second, Ty, wait a second, you missed out on the, I needed to let everybody know there's a few more days left of the April special that we're running um, for Pepperstone clients. So if you're interested in doing our courses, the foundations course um, and our private telegram group, and of course uh, the webinars we do, we're offering a 50% discount. I've popped it in the room if anyone's interested in doing that. And uh, that will run out in a couple of days, but, uh, Look, the, the point is, is that we want to help as many people as we can to obviously, um, you know, learn as much as they can and more importantly, learn it in a succinct manner uh, rather than hearing so much different information, getting confused and then not following uh, what I think is probably the most important thing, which is having a really great price action base on your trading. Whether you want to add different indicators and other things later on, price action is key. It is a super lead indicator. And while indicators might not lie, because they're based on printing past history, they definitely won't get you in as fast as price action can over the long haul. So definitely check that out. Yeah, definitely. And just for all of the people who um, who do have Telegram but aren't on both, it's very, very important for all of the FX Evolution Telegram um, users. If you haven't got Pepperstone, make sure you get it. And same goes for the Pepperstone users. If you haven't got the FX Evolution one, get it because they are very, very different. Um, yeah, one is basically uh, a chat room where you can discuss trades with other traders. And the other one is just uh, information constantly coming through about what's happening in the live market. So it's very important that you have both because they are very, very different. Different. Don't think that you're getting the same content in both because, um, yeah, you're definitely going to have uh, different outcomes. So, yeah, register for both because they're both free. So, very, very useful resource. I'm going to answer two questions here, Ty, uh, because I think they're kind of important. Uh, is there any offer discount available regarding Pepperstone Trading Tools? Uh, you can get that just by having a funded account and talking to your sales rep, I believe. Um, and in terms of subtitles, they may be done automatically by YouTube, so possibly that could be an opportunity for you to get subtitles for the webinar. Uh, how do you use pivot points indicator? This is the one I want to answer. And keep the previous day's pivot lines on the chart. 
That's from Bradley. Bradley, check out the Meta, go look at MetaTrader, um, just search MetaTrader in Google and search MetaTrader Pivot and go to the, M, Meta, I think it's like MQL or MetaTrader website. There's so many different pivot point indicators. Install a few of them and have a look around because there are other pivot points and they'll hold all of your daily history if you want to use those kind of things. I would say with pivots, stick on the daily probably is the better. Daily, daily and down four hour kind of ones. Yeah, I've used them a lot, so yeah, check that out. Okay, all right. Well, we'll see everybody else in the next webinar, Ty. And uh, obviously, thank you very much for your support and continuing to come here. And hopefully, you guys are enjoying. And please give us your feedback because we like to answer as many things as we can that you want. So that's our most important thing for us. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Good night, and we will see you either in ten minutes or next Wednesday. Absolutely.